the company reported a good set of Q3 numbers with the highest ever quarterly bookings and strong volumes. Pirot Shah Godrej, the executive chairman of Godrej Properties, is now with us on the show now. Uh, you know, hi, and thanks so much for joining in. Before we get chatting about the Q3 numbers, wanted to understand from you the budget impact. Uh, the cap on exemptions for capital gains is now at 10 crores, which was not there earlier. Do you see this impacting the high-end luxury sales for you? And if yes, what percentage of your overall sales volumes and value comes from that segment where uh, the property value is in excess of 10 crores? Great to be with you. Um, I think the budget overall has been a, a very good one that will be quite pro-growth and therefore beneficial to, to overall economy as well as to the real estate sector. I think on the specific question about the, the, the tax exemption on, on capital gains over 10 crore, which is not necessarily the same thing as the apartment value being 10 crore, our interpretation is that that implies that the, the gain on the property would have to be more than 10 crore. Yes. But in any case, the, that segment of the market, I think, is a very, very small segment of the overall residential market in the country. And certainly for Godrej Properties, would be a negligible part of our business currently. And even from an industry perspective, I don't think it will be a very big impact because in addition to that, there have also been other tax adjustments like on the surcharge for people earning over two crores a year, where the effective income tax rate has reduced. So I think overall, I don't expect uh, any change in the margin. In any case, it's a very small part. Pirosha, if we could just uh, request you, I think there's a lot of background uh, noise that was just coming through. Uh, so yeah, if we could just... Uh, uh, we'll just fix that, yeah. If we could just fix that, yeah. Yeah, please continue. So you're basically saying that this 10 crore cap, uh, this is not going to have any sort of an impact uh, uh, on your business? That's correct. I think this 10 crore cap, as I mentioned, I think, uh, you know, it might be less than 1% of our property sales. Hmm. I think it'll be even less than that, uh, Prasha, because the gain has to be 10 crores, right? But anyway, let's let's move on. Let's talk about your numbers then. You believe the budget is good? This impact of this 10 crore limit in terms of uh, a, an exemption, you believe it's not going to have a big impact on the business as well as for the industry on the whole. So let's talk about numbers. The good part is you had put out a guidance, a booking guidance of close around 10,000 crores. Now you're saying that uh, you know, you're know you well positioned to get past this. How much are you going to beat it by, the 10? thousand crore mark and now how does it set you up for FY24? Yeah, I think we're very happy with the, the progress in the year so far. I think we ended the third quarter with about year-to-date sales of about 8,000, just under 8,200 crore of sales. Um, Q4 is typically a, a pretty big quarter, so I, I think we should go well past that 10,000 crore. Where, you know, exactly where we end up will be a function of you know how many launches end up happening on time mm. um, and, and sort of the exact response we see. But I think we're very satisfied um, with the numbers so far and quite confident of another good quarter this quarter. Um, I think even more exciting for us, though, was that this third quarter was our best ever quarter hmm. for new business development. Uh, we added nine new projects with a total uh, future booking value of about 23,000 crore just within the quarter. So I think that sets us up very nicely for continued strong growth on the top line in hmm. the years ahead. I think the opportunity... Okay for leading property developers is at least uh, a 20% year-on-year growth, given the kind of opportunity there is both to participate in the sector's growth, but also to continue to gain market share. All right, Pirocha, you know, at the nine-month mark, you're closer on 8,000 crores, as you said. And quarter four is, uh, is the heavy quarter, right? So, you know, even if you do what you did in quarter three, then we're looking at a number in excess of around 11,000 crores. Uh, get a bit? I hope so. Um, again, you know, I think we'll we'll have to execute well, but I but I think uh, it, it's certainly possible, and the teams are certainly very geared up to to make it happen. Mm. Uh, Pirusha, hi, good afternoon, uh, Prashant here. Uh, would I don't know if we've asked you this before, but uh, you know, stock markets are are, are a big uh, spin off for, uh, I'm, you know, this is obviously anecdotal uh, because we don't have hard data. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's it's uh, quite common, at least at least in cities like uh, Mumbai, which have got a big investing culture, where people uh, sort of sell shares to buy uh, property. When and, and for the last year or so, over a year, uh, markets have not been doing well. They've been kind of flattish. Uh, by, by the way, do you have any data on? Do you keep this kind of record? Uh, what, what what are the implications? This is pure wealth effect, right? 
Yeah, I think it's 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 a bit of you know you have you have two sort of contradictory effects in some ways. On the one hand, when markets do well, people have made money; they want to you know invest some of that into real estate. On the other hand, if markets don't do well, you also can see some excitement on a relative investment uh, basis because people think that while property investments have underperformed over the past seven or eight years, that now we might be entering into a different leg of the cycle. So it's hard to sort of disentangle all of that. But I think more important for us than investor demand really is um, is end user demand looking quite strong. And I think um, over the last couple of years, fortunately, that has clearly been evident. Um, and our sense is, you know, usually these each leg of the cycle does tend to last between seven and nine years, and we're probably now in the second year of the cyclical recovery. So we're quite optimistic about the next few years, which is also why we are trying to disproportionately invest into new business development to make sure that we have in place a portfolio that can sustain the kind of high growth rates we hope to deliver over these next few years. Uh, Pirosha, uh, just very quickly, uh, before we run into the break, uh, just give us a sense on uh, pricing, whether incrementally you are seeing gains, and if so, in which pockets around the country. And just a word on your land acquisition plans as well. Will you be spending a lot more on FY24 in, uh, on, on land acquisition? Yes, I think to answer your second question first, we certainly intend to continue to invest in business development during the current calendar year. We continue to see good opportunities and hope to, to build on this momentum we've seen. In terms of price increases, I think, uh, you know, across all geographies and across all um, price segments in residential real estate, we have seen price appreciation over the last year. I think that's varied from sort of single digit price appreciation in, in some markets to somewhere like NCR, which has probably seen 25 to 30% price appreciation over the last 12 to 18 months. Um, but our sense is that the next couple of years should actually see quite robust price appreciation. Typically the way the cycle works is in the first two years, the recovery is more focused on volumes, which we've seen pan out across the country. And then you start seeing pricing momentum um, to take place in, in, in sort of higher order, as has already happened somewhere like NCR, but probably hasn't happened to the same extent in, in most of the other markets yet. You know, Pirocha, your clientele would be hoping you go easy on the pricing, <laughs> though the stock market participants and shareholders will say, go for it. You know, that's what helps you uh, in terms of sales, revenues, profitability as well. Before we let you go very quickly, on a scale of one to 10, uh, you know, we are supposedly at the start of this real, real estate cycle that was asleep for the last 10 years. Where do you think we have reached? You know, I, I, I think if it's, a, as I said, if it's a you know seven, eight year cycle, I think we're in year two. So I yeah, think okay. there's a long way okay. to, to go still. Um, and we're certainly very optimistic about the, the right. prospects. Uh, Pirosha, thanks very much. Great speaking with you. Appreciate you uh, joining in uh, with that uh, perspective. So uh, uh, thanks very much. Uh, markets, by the way, are blinking uh, red and green like a traffic light. Uh, absolutely uh, flat. We're down 30, up 30. So very sharp, quick moves uh, coming through. Uh, on uh, the uh, indices. We'll take a very quick break here. On the other side, we have N. Jay Kumar of Prime Securities uh, joining in uh, with his market outlook. Jay Bala, of course, is uh, with us as well. And we'll uh, keep going back uh, to him. Uh, Jay Kumar coming up on the other side.